There we go. Oh, oh, the heck? Oh, cat toy. Yes, I have cat toys all over the place. These are good, especially if you have cats. And welcome back to the Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Show. I still have to figure out a new name. I think with work and the fishing trips and my fishing excursions I've been taking. I haven't had a chance to do much stuff. I am getting things ready for my St. Valentine's Day. Because this one will go out to all the ladies wrestling show, which is coming up in very quick program notes. Today you're going to be going, I'm going to talk about, once I figure out how to talk, i talk about SmackDown Live, which is a really fun show. I think there are only two wrestling matches. Oh, wait, there were only two wrestling matches. But I'll get to that shortly. I just realized that it was really entertaining. Felt like more, and I'll tell you why shortly. Um, previously, I had my Raw review up on, hopefully by Thursday morning, sometime late Thursday morning, going to get my Valentine's Day special up, and just to let you know, it's going to feature some wrestling matches here, for, here at the Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League Wrestling. Not bum fights, it's just bum fight league wrestling. And of course, it's going to be all women, an all women event, because it's going to go out just for you ladies for Valentine's Day. It's going to feature the Detroit Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling Wrestling Ring, which is a unique creation. I finally figured it out. And we're going to have a couple things. Um, and then we're going to have probably about three matches. We have an extreme rules match, a tag team match, an inferno match, and a championship match. And you never know what happens here in Daytona Beach. So again, stay tuned for that, and that'll be probably posted Thursday. Probably Friday night, Saturday-ish morning. I'm going to be doing my uh, predictions. That's, that's the word. For Elimination Chamber, because that's actually coming up on Sunday. I should put that. I have to put that on my calendar. Elimination. Elimination Chamber. I can cross that off. I did that. It's off. I did that. I'm doing this. I went fishing. Woohoo. Fishing was good. It's nice and relaxing. I just had a nice yummy bowl of chicken soup, some crackers, some carbs, some fluids. I'm all ready for all ready for tomorrow's work. But enough about that nonsense. Let's talk about some SmackDown. This SmackDown actually felt like a true go-home show. Mainly because, granted, there were two matches. The, the one match I'll get into, which was amazing. The other match, it was good. It told a story. It, kind of, it gave me the math to figure out stuff. So, we'll see how predictable the WWE is going to be. So, we start off SmackDown Live with a kind of a recap of what happened at the end of Raw. Vincent K. McMahon, I'm the man, came down and said, Becky Lynch, you're not the man. My best Paul Ellering voice. And I think his daughter, Rachel Ellering, actually just signed to NXT. So I wonder, you never know, maybe we'll see Paul Ellering here in Daytona Beach manage his daughter. Because everyone knows. Paul Ellering hates Cleveland. And I alone, I, Paul Ellering, have the algorithm. So, because so does Hobo Tom, and the algorithm is if you stand tall, you lose. But we'll see what happens. 
I don't know. Might be predicted wrong. Generally, I've been pretty good. I think at worst, I've been a 50 50 booker. Sometimes, depending for other wrestling promotions, I do get that interested fan area. But enough about that. SmackDown again. So you have Charlotte Flair comes out, cuts a promo. Charlotte, what at the crowd? That was great. They're chanting, you sold out. And she would just say, what? You sold out. What? 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 That was great. That was good because normally it's the wrestlers that get wanted. Always nice to see those wrestlers turn the table. That was kind of fun. And that starts off um, a whole bunch of promos. Mainly um, from the SmackDown participants in the Women's Tag Team Championship Elim Elimination Chamber. I still think the WWE is making a big mistake not calling up Io Shirai and Kyrie Sane and having them be the jump, jumping bomb, bomb Angels 2.0. Just me. Um, so again, so you had promos from Manny, uh, Manny DeVille. Ma 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 I'm sorry. Manny DeVille. Mandy Rose and, and Boo Sonya Deville. The Iconics. And Naomi and Kamala. And I'll tell you what. Two of these three tag teams have no chance of winning. That'd be weird. I could do that. I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, this match was good. The fact. One of the things I do like about these matches, because there is the stipulation of whichever team gets pinned starts off first. The comics are smart. First of all, Billy Kay's boobies got a little bit bigger. But bra's a little more full filled out. Again, just things I noticed randomly. She had a much fuller looking bra. Which she normally does. But when you see her live, you're like, oh, baby. Minor quibble. So it's, um, the match starts off. Iconics are like, we, we, we want nothing to do with this. We'll, we'll let you guys play it out. So for most of the match, it's really Sonya Deville versus either Naomi or Carmella. And the one good thing is that they're still continuing the storyline with Mandy Rose and Naomi, so it's not so good. At least there's some continuity involved. And that's a good thing, because generally WWE has been known to actually just throw things together and then forget about stuff. So this is pretty good. Naomi is amazingly athletic. I never realized how good Mandy was. Mandy Rose was in the room, in the ring. Sonya Deville... This hate, I hate this. I hate saying this so much. She, she, she's a thousand times improved. I said it. I'm still going to say boo Sonya Deville, though. I still remember when she beat my princess, Kimberly. So again, Naomi is athletic as anything. She can do the flippy, flippy stuff. She does the split-legged moonsault. I think she's one of the few people that could actually probably do a knockoff version of Starship Pain. She's only just a couple of rotations away from Starship Pain. And with her outfit, it would be this like whole green and purple glowing spinny thing. It would be a cool visual. Ooh. Especially if they blacklit it. That's asking too much, though. They don't even have fireworks anymore. So again, whenever um, Naomi got in the ring, she would always go after Mandy Rose. Eventually, Mandy Rose did do a splash onto Naomi. And that, that was good. So, so this continues, and I hope it does continue. The Iconics, they're just staying out of the way. Let them beat each other up. And then Naomi... Oh, wow, that's right. Naomi and Carmelo won the match. They pinned, I think, I think, 
Mandy Rose ate the pin from Naomi. But then, so then you realize, okay, well, Naomi and Carmella's not winning. Then the Iconics just jumped them. The Iconics stand tall. We'll ask a true wrestling professional, Dr. Tom. We'll have him on. I could, we could have him on Saturday for the predictions. I do that. I might have to give someone a call. Um, then, of course, again, there was a whole women's promo for the whole Elimination Chamber from, from Raw and SmackDown. Then it's time for McMiz TV. And while they're getting things set up, Mustafa Ali did a promo. I have no idea where he's living, but it must be in the north somewhere. Or I've heard actually reports about there's snow in Hawaii, especially on the mountains and volcanoes of Hawaii, which seems weird. Because that's paradise. That means paradise froze over. Here in Florida, it would be if hell froze over. Because that would be Cleveland. So Ali just looks beat up. You did get a pretty big shiner on his face, and that was kind of pulled over from last week. I don't think he broke any facial bones, though. I think it's more just his shoulders and just general kind of wear and tear. Then, we, again, we had McMiz TV. It's all set up. They invite the Usos down. The Usos are so good on the mic. They need to be on the mic more. It would be a shame to see them leave WWE because I don't think they would be able to do the promo work for All Elite Wrestling that the WWE would allow them to. It might the wrestling might be better. Don't get me wrong. The promo and just pure entertainment value. Mm, they're so good. They're such a WWE staple. And again, they come from that long line of Samoans in the WWE. And I don't see them. Again, just my opinion. I don't see them going to all you wrestling. They're, they're way too vested. In WWE, and the WWE is way too too vested in them. Uh, Shane McMahon has some good lines. Going to hit you so hard that your brother will feel it. Ooh, classic. And then of course they did the line: "When my hand goes up, your mouth goes shut." The only problem is the Uso stood tall after this. I mean, Shane and the Miz could, in theory, hold the belts until WrestleMania. Drop it. Who they drop the belts to? Sanity? Maybe. That would be good. What other tag teams are there? Sanity, Heavy Machine. I'm not going to call up, not going to call up TM61 yet. They're not going to call up the Street Profits for the belt. Oh, wait. I know they're going to have the shakeup. Maybe Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, the Edgeheads. You know, who knows? And then we have really the. Oh, wait. And then in a backstage seg segment, the, the, the New Day has their whole thing with pancakes. I get that. Mr. Bootiesworth had this huge breakfast sausage. And he gave it to Big E, and Big E just carries this huge breakfast sausage on his shoulder. And it was an uncooked sausage, because it was still pink. Weird. And he is just funny. Then this led to the main event of the evening. And in this event, this is a gauntlet match to determine who enters in last at the Elimination Chamber. Um, a lot of stuff happened. I'm going to kind of summarize it because it would take way too long. It starts off with Daniel Bryan in the ring. He gives this normal, you need me to be your hero. You guys are destroying the earth. Look at what the autumn, I think he didn't mention the automotive industry has done to this entire area. Well, water's not drinkable. I, I do know for a fact that at one time, the Kalamazoo River was the most polluted river in the U.S. If it wasn't number one. I think I lived in the States with 
two most polluted rivers. Yeah. The Kalamazoo River was, I think, number one. The Merrimack River, for a time, was the second most polluted. And I think they kind of switch spots every so often. So Daniel Bryan does does have a point about about how people have destroyed parts of Michigan. Well, parts of Michigan, I remember seeing like sheep farms in Michigan. In fact, I think I only live 20 minutes away from it. I lived out there. <laughs> I lived, actually, I lived right outside. Depending where I went, I lived outside cell phone range too. And I even saw the Northern Lights when I made a trip up to North Central Michigan. Not necessarily the tip of the Lower Peninsula and not the Upper Peninsula, but pretty much Central. I think it was that weird time. I did so I can so I so I can say I've seen the Northern Lights, which is actually an amazing sight to see, and I do recommend everyone. If you can, and if it's within your means, try. It is. You're just you just stare up there and say, "Whoa!" What if Daniel Bryan did that? He just stared up there. Whoa! It's so pretty. Don't I couldn't get a picture of it because I had my ancient cell phone with me. But it was pretty cool though. I'll give it that much. I think it was like in June and it was still like I think freezing or above freezing. I think it was like 40 degrees in like June. That's a whole other topic. So then Kof, so then the new day comes out, they start to tease. Is Biggie gonna go in? No, it's not Biggie. What about Xavier Woods? Nope, not Xavier Woods. So Kofi Kingston. So we have a oh wow, amazing match. With Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston. This match, this whole gauntlet match idea is amazing. I'm just going to give it overall a flaming yawn rating because it was so good. Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston, they could highlight any Big Four pay per view based on this one match alone. They were pulling out Kofi. I never realized Kofi Kingston had such an arsenal. Because Jeremy, with the New Day, he has he uses so few moves. He does the flippy, the flippy stuff. Amazing. He has a very high impact top rope game. He has his um, top rope assisted, rope assisted, kind of springboard assisted move set with his kicks. Amazing. He has the Trouble in Paradise kick. He has the SOS, which looks great, by the way. I have to figure out. Change the movesets and get the SOS. I'm going to have to ponder that all day tomorrow at work when I'm bored. So no customers show up because it's a Wednesday morning. Um, again, Kofi Kingston, he busts out the whole arsenal. Daniel Bryan does the same thing. There were some moves Daniel Bryan hasn't done doing the top rope headbutt. He did go the well once too often with that top rope headbutt. Um, eventually Rowan does get involved. He kind of beat, he yanks Kofi Kingston when, of course, the rest back was turned. So then, of course, Biggie and Xavier Woods go to beat him up. The ref says, hey, and none of those shenanigans. You too. You're out. So he kicks the New Day out. Wrestling match continues. Because technically they really didn't interfere. They beat up Rowan. Who's not a part of the match anyway. And then of course, if Kingston goes back out, Rowan like throws him into the timekeeper's area. The ref didn't see him do it. But he just, this ref was smart. Because he just looked where Kofi Kingston was. How did you, what are you doing? I'm sick of this. Rowan, you're out of here. So he kicks Rowan out. Daniel Bryan goes bonkers. 
And eventually, I think um, Kofi Kingston, again, this was amazing. Kofi Kingston hit the Trouble in Paradise on Daniel Bryant. Pinned Daniel Bryant. Daniel Bryant looks in shock. Jeff Hardy comes out. Kofi Kingston's totally spent at this point. Um, th this was pretty quick. Uh, Jeff Hardy just tried to go for the Swanton Bomb whenever he could. He tried his all his signatures and finishers, for those of you that play WWE 2K games. It was just like finisher, finisher, finisher. Okay, signature, come back, finisher. For Jeff Hardy, he couldn't hit anything. Um, with that, Poofy Kingston hit the SOS on Jeff Hardy. But that brought Samoa Joe. And Samoa Joe, he had that grin. He looks like He looked like a tiger who just saw a wounded gazelle. He's like, yeah, I'm going to get him now. Samoa Joe came out a little too overconfident. And that's the way he should always be. He should just have this grin when he's punching people, when he's mauling people. And for, for, for every so often he would toss Kofi Kingston on the outside. Samoa Joe's smart. Threw him out. Oh, I'm going to lean up here against the ropes. You know, help help the ref count. Six, seven, eight, nine. Whoa! And then he would, and then Kofi Kingston would get in. Um, again, he tried to put the. I don't know. He tried to again go for another count on victory. Kofi Kingston just jumped back in. And Samoa Joe's like, okay, I'm, I'm done playing around. Coquina clutch, rear naked choke, whatever he calls it. Sleeper hold. But Kofi Kingston kind of does the backflip rolling thing where Samoa Joe still has the Coquina clutch applied, but he's on his back, so he gets the three count that way. Samoa Joe is not happy. Just goes out, continues to choke out Kofi Kingston because Samoa Joe's out. And then AJ Styles runs to help Kofi Kingston. Stomps right on the head of Samojo. Chases Samojo off. Says, Kofi, are you sure you want to do this? It's like, listen. This is where AJ Styles is really phenomenal. Because he's actually being the face sportsman. He's like, okay, well, we'll just take your time. Are you sure you want to do it? Kofi's like, yeah, man. Oh, fight me. And AJ's like, okay, you asked for it. The only thing I think they give this part of the match about 10 minutes. I was watching the clock. I'm like, wow, it's 9.58. Oh, wait a second. But there's one more person, and we know we all know what happens when that one person shows up. So, again, this was a great match. I mean... I don't know who is the master of the backbreaker anymore. Is it Roderick Strong? Or is it AJ Styles? They both have so many variations of the backbreaker. It's awesome to watch. Um, eventually, AJ Styles does get Kofi Kingston in the calf crusher. Kofi taps out. He's exhausted. Kofi, he gets a standing applause. AJ Styles is a classy thing. He just kind of sets, sets in the background, claps. AJ Styles, um, I'm sorry, Kofi Kingston gets the standing ovation from the crowd. Very well deserved. That was awesome. And then you hear Randy Orton's music. And the one way to distract any wrestler is to play some of this music because they're going to stare at the stage. For about 30 seconds, AJ Styles is waiting. He's like, Come on. Out of, the, out of nowhere. Randy Orton doesn't even take his sweatshirt vest off, the zip-up sweatshirt vest off. RKO's AJ Styles out of nowhere, picks up the pin. One, two, three. And Randy Orton's going to be the last person to enter the elimination tag match. Which might be interesting because Daniel Bryan might be dropping that belt to Randy Orton. Which would be a fun thing. 
Yeah, this whole match, this whole concept, this was so amazing. This is this whole thing gets a filet mignon rating. And really, that was SmackDown. It felt like a really good go home SmackDown. I mean, the fact that like the Gauntlet match took over an hour. I want to say it started. I don't know the exact time, but I want to say it was probably about eight fifty when Daniel Bryan's music hit. Then there's commercials, and he does his he does his yakety yak promo. But this was fun though, and I'll tell you what. You really did have one, two. You really had, for the most part, say five wrestling matches in one show. So again, it was good. Um, they didn't have any. Well, well, they did lay seeds for the tag. Oscar wasn't there though. That's weird. There, and then the U.S. Championship wasn't there. They're kind of. I feel bad. They're getting lost in the shuffle. Um, probably when I do my live stream for Elimination Chamber, I'll bring up some ideas I have because the U.S. title is getting lost. The the SmackDown's Women's Champion is getting lost. You never know. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And again, for Valentine's Day. I have a video just for you ladies. I'll see everyone later. Bye.